Functions in Swift allow us to add new functionality to existing classes or structures. This includes even data types such as int, double, or string. We can add methods for those different data types. In this example, I've set up a label that I've called title label. I created an outlet for it as a UI label. And it has a background color of this light blue. Then I have a button that says what color. And I've created an action for the what color button. Uh, the action is called get color button. And what I want to do is when I click this button, I want to show the RGBA breakout values of this background color for the title label. And I will show that in the output label, which I've also created an outlet for. So I could write a function where I would pass it a UI color. I could pass it the UI color of this label and have it parse it out in the RGBA values and return those as a string. And that would work fine. But wouldn't it be cool to have a method that's part of UI color that I could call and have it just present the RGBA values as a string? And that's what extensions can do for us. It allows us to add methods into existing classes. So to do that, I'm going to come down here to the bottom of my code. And so I'm outside of the class for the view controller until I want to I'm going to do an extension for the UI color class. And then I'm going to tell it the function I want. I'm going to call color to RGBA. It's not going to need anything passed to it because this is going to be part of the color that I'm referencing. And return a string. Okay, so that would allow me then to go in and add code for this function, have it return a string, and then I can call it from the color value. So to save some time, I have just jumped to having written the code, and so you don't have to watch me type this all in. And all I'm doing is I'm creating some variables uh, that are CG floats because this goes back to UI color uh, was initially coded in Objective C. So we're using CG floats for the red, green, blue, and alpha. So I've named those F red, F green, F blue, F alpha. I've created a string to pass back, which can be my color string. And then I'm simply using the self, which is the UI color itself that I'm going to attach this to. There's a function called get red. And get red's a little bit of a, of a misnamed function, I think, because it's not only just getting the red, you can get the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha values. And I check to see if any of those happen to be less than zero, because sometimes it'll return a value that's a minus, and I'm going to then set it in zero for any one of those channels if it is a negative color. Then I'm going to convert these to integers and put those in four integer values, add those into my color string using interpolation of I red, I green, I blue, and I alpha, and return my color string. And if for some reason that doesn't work, as far as this function, then I'm going to return the string of failure. And I can handle that in the calling statement. So that's my extension. And I could add more functions for UI color within the extension uh, UI color framework here that we've set up. So now I'm going to go to my get color button code. I'm going to create a constant called RGBA. It's going to be a type string. And it's going to equal the title label dot back color, background color, dot, and notice I have in the help system here now colored RGBA. It's recognizing that as a valid method of a UI color object. So we're going to call that. And the back color here, I'm just going to unwrap with an exclamation mark since it isn't optional. So then I'm going to test for that value of failure if things didn't work. And we'll do if RGBA equals failure. And you do capital F because that's what I'm passing back to it. We are case sensitive. And we'll add an else clause here to do something else if it did work, which hopefully will always be the case. So our output label dot text is going to equal 
let's do an error message here of uh, color to RGBA method failed. Otherwise, we'll do output label dot text equals, and we'll just provide a message of the background color, of the title is, I'm going to do a new line, and just so you can see this, I'm going to drop this down, and here I'm going to interpolate RGBA. Okay, so let's test this. I'm going to run it on the iPhone 8 simulator. Click the what color. And I'm getting the message. The background color of the title is 117 red, 213 green, 255 blue, and 255 alpha. So there you have it. That's how we can add methods to existing classes. And what I primarily do is I have a Word document that I maintain of different extensions that I've created. And because I code in different languages, there are some things that I do like in um, C Sharp that are not available as far as methods in Swift, but I wish they were. And so I've created my own methods, particularly for string values. But here is some extensions I did for UI color. So here's one in color to RGBA. Another one, I'll do this and we'll run this in a minute, but I'd like to be able to create a color passing it the hex string rather than the separate red, green, blue values. And I'm surprised that Swift doesn't have that, but it's easy enough to write your own. And what we do there is we create a, a method that begins with convenience, and it's an init. So we're doing a convenience init, and I'm passing it a string value. And in that string value, I'm going to separate the string out into the red, green, blue values. And then I'm going to call an init that's already been created for us, that's part of the UI color class, where I'm passing it the red, green, blue values. That's all happening behind the scenes. All I'm doing is just calling UI color and passing the hexadecimal string. And then I have some extensions I've done for strings here. Um, in C Sharp, there's some really useful things for creating columns, including pad right and pad left, where you can put a certain number of characters either before or after a string. And then I also created one for pad center, where you put a string in the center of a column and pad it on each side with a, with a special character. C Sharp also has index of, which um, I understand that in Swift there are some characters that are made up of multiple characters that are displayed as one character, but they're made up of multiple characters, and that Chris problem is with a traditional index of. But I tend not to do those things, so I wanted an index of, a simplified index of, that I could just find where, special, where a character was in a string. And the same thing with a substring, to pull out a substring of a simple alphanumeric string. I have two versions of the substring, as we would expect in uh, like C Sharp, where I can do a starting value and a number of characters, or a starting value in the string and going to the end of that string. So those are just some extensions that I use. Um, you're free to pause the video and create those yourself. What I would typically do though, and I'm going to come back here and just get rid of this UI extension, is I would come in and add a new file. It's going to be a Swift file. And I'm just going to call it extensions.swift. And then I'm going to paste my code in from that Word document. I'm just going to narrow this a little bit so you can see that all there. And I might choose only to paste in just those um, extensions that I want to use in this project. So now we have this convenience in it of passing it a hex string. So let's try that. I'm going to come back to the viewcontroller.swift file. I'm going to go into the view did load. I'm going to bring up the storyboard. And I'm going to create an outlet for the view itself. I'm just going to call it um, main 
view. And then write some code in the view did load of main view dot background color. So I'm gonna have it equal a UI color. And then we're gonna pass it our hex value. So I created an argument label of hex. And the South Mountain orange that we use for our logo is CF7F00. That's the hexadecimal value. So more red than green, no blue. And that should set up our background for this uh, app as the South Mountain orange. Now, if you're working with a client, oftentimes they will have very specific colors in their branding guides that they want for their logos, for the backgrounds, for their text, and so forth. And more often than not, those are provided as hexadecimal values rather than red, green, blue. It's just easier to work with the hex values. It's less likely to make, you're less likely to make a typographical error. So that's why I wanted to create this, um, initialize, this convenience initializer for the UI color. We'll run this in our simulator and we can see we're getting this South Mountain orange background. So it's pulling that uh, extension from our extensions.swift file. 